Hey guys, my name is Dice Brolin. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some facts you didn't know about a favorite among werewolf horror films. The Howling was directed by Joe Dante and follows a newswoman as she attempts to recover from an attack by a serial killer. There's a lot for her to uncover the truth about, including unknowingly being in the midst of werewolves. So without further ado, these are some things you didn't know about The Howling. A secret society exists and is living among all of us. They are neither people nor animals, but something in between. There are a number of characters named after directors who had made werewolf films. Terence Fisher, Freddie Francis, Roy William Neal, George Wagner, Early C. Kenton, Charles Barton, Jerry Warren, Lou Landers, Sam Newfield, Jacinto Molina, which is a name often used by Paul Nasky. The discomfort of the character Karen White while she's in the porn store isn't acting. Dee Wallace was genuinely unhappy to be there. The film Eddie plays in the porn store was created solely for The Howling, the entirety of which was originally going to be included on a DVD release of the movie. However, this was banned by the British Board of Film Classification. While Chris and Terry are having a look around in Eddie's apartment, you can spot a newspaper article titled Death by Man-Eating Piranha. This, combined with Belinda Belaski's appearance in the film, is a nod to Piranha 1978. The mention of someone named Stuart Walker by the coroner is a nod to the director of Werewolf of London 1935. There are a number of set pieces and props from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974 throughout the film. The easiest to spot is the grandmother corpse in Walter Paisley's bookstore. A small fan theory in regards to this movie is who actually bit Bill. The speculation is that either TC or Marsha are to blame, and it's almost completely accepted to be Marsha. The final transformation portion of the bonfire scene was achieved through use of puppetry and stop-motion animation, provided by David W. Allen. In the office of Dr. Wagner when Terry calls Chris, a picture of Lon Chaney Jr. can be seen on the wall. Eddie's line, I want to give you a piece of my mind, as he pulls the bullet from his head was improvised by Robert Picardo. The transformation scene for Karen was primarily shot in close-ups in Joe Dante's office since by this point in filming they had run out of money. The scream from Karen near the end of the film is real. Apparently, a sound effect was going to be used instead, but Dee Wallace insisted on giving it a try. The end result was more than satisfactory to the crew and Wallace. If you've ever wondered why Karen looked so different from the other werewolves, it's because Dee Wallace didn't want to be an ugly werewolf. This did end up being difficult for Rob Bottin to try to pull off. Roger Corman makes a cameo as the man waiting outside the phone booth while Karen speaks with Eddie. This is also thought to be an homage to Rosemary's Baby. Someone else who makes a cameo is Forrest J. Ackerman, who was responsible for Famous Monsters of Filmland. As an added nod, he was holding one of his own magazines. Co-screenwriter John Sayles even appears as the morgue attendant, and Mick Garris is one of the viewers when Karen gives her final broadcast. Gremlins and The Howling could very well be in the same universe. The character of Lou Landers, played by James McCrell, shows up in both movies, and one of the smiley face stickers Eddie likes to use can be seen on the fridge door in Gremlins. The location of the colony's resort is Mendocino Woodlands Camp in North California, and you can still visit today. Both The Howling and Howling 4, the original Nightmare, were based on the Gary Bradner novel by the same name. However, Howling 4 was a closer representation to the book than The Howling. One of the people who had originally been set to direct was Jack Conrad. However, he was forced to leave due to issues with the studio. Similarly, Terence H. Winkless left after his screenplay was less than happily received. The role of Marcia was offered to Annette Haven, but she turned it down due to being against the violent nature of the screenplay. Christopher Stone and Dee Wallace were actually engaged during the filming of this movie, and remained together until his passing in 1995. Previously, it had been claimed that The Howling was the first movie to feature a female werewolf. This isn't quite true. Both Cry of the Werewolf 1944 and La Loba 1965 had female werewolves. 
Originally, Rick Baker was the one working on the special effects for the movie. However, John Landis enlisted him in working on his werewolf movie, An American Werewolf in London. So Baker put his assistant, Rob Bottin, in his place for The Howling. Both movies, which were released the same year, were praised for their effects. Because of the makeup that Robert Picardo had to go through, he became somewhat depressed. According to him, after he'd spent over six hours in the makeup chair one day, he thought about his Yale education and the leading roles he'd had on Broadway. Whereas now, he was going to have his face melted on a low-budget horror movie. Unfortunately, he really didn't get much sympathy from the crew, as they told him to read the script all the way through next time. Elizabeth Brooks was none too pleased with how her nude scene turned out. According to Brooks, being naked in front of the filming crew wasn't the issue. During a US magazine interview after the release of The Howling, she said, In the past, I've always refused to do nude magazine work because I believe in the Bible and have morals. I was signed to do the movie on my acting ability alone. I was told the nudity would be smoke screened by a bonfire and that you wouldn't be able to see anything. Playboy magazine published images of the scene without Brooks's knowledge before she even saw the finished movie. Brooks wasn't the only one displeased with her nude scene either. Apparently, Dee Wallace had it in her contract that there would be no nudity in the film. As a matter of fact, during the climactic scene in the barn, Wallace had arrived to find a bunch of naked women and refused to shoot the scene. In order to smooth things over and get the production moving again, producer Mike Fennell was called in. Already unhappy with the delay, he had a look at the scene that was prepared and said, She's right. It's stupid. Put some clothes on. It's never truly explained what happened to Chris after the ending of The Howling. However, many fans assume that in order to avoid being labeled and convicted as a murderer, as well as facing the colony, he turned the gun on himself. It took a little over 28 days to film The Howling. Dick Miller has stated that this was his favorite role in a horror movie. Elizabeth Brooks was supposed to return as Marsha for Howling 2. However, at the time, she was suffering from pelvic inflammatory disease. One of the reasons why Robert Picardo got the part of Eddie was through Joe Dante seeing his performance in The Odd Couple. He had also managed to thoroughly creep out the casting director, Susan Arnold. Even Dee Wallace was unnerved by his portrayal of the character, stating, I don't remember Robert. I remember Eddie. You can thank The Howling for Gremlin's existence. Steven Spielberg gave Joe Dante and Michael Fennell the chance to work on the film because of it. Apparently, Joe Dante isn't fond of Brandner's novel. He had mentioned several times in interviews and the like that it wasn't much good and that the movie had improved upon the source material. While Dante was at a lecture at the Hollywood Script Writing Institute, he was saying similar things. In the audience, a man said, So you don't like the book, huh? To which Dante said, Well, no, not really. The man responded by saying, Because I wrote that book. This man was, in fact, Gary Brandner. There are a series of comic books called The Howling Revenge of the Werewolf Queen that function as a direct continuation of the movie. So those are some facts about The Howling you may not have known. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like to let me know. See you later.